Welcome back, my sweet friends. How is everyone doing today? My name is Emmy. My husband is Paul. You saw him at the beginning of the video. The reality of living in the country. As much as we love all the trees and nature around us, when those leaves start dropping, well, you can see what Paul has to do. So it's a little do-it-yourself yard work, that's for sure. We are an early retirement debt-free, mortgage-free couple living in the state of New York. And basically this channel just shows you how to have a full, abundant life spending less money. So today's video we have crammed again with a bunch of great, fun, frugal living hints and tips. We're gonna be focusing a little bit on the holidays, upcoming Thanksgiving and the holidays after that, and how we can just simplify, create some of our own treats, and just make it a glorious time of year. We're gonna show you an easy, quick crock pot recipe that is actually restaurant worthy. So easy, so good, minimal ingredients. Then we're going to talk a little bit about something that could be stealing our money throughout the holiday season. And then lastly, we're going to make a homemade sweet treat that will really surprise you because one of the ingredients in that treat, everybody usually buys from the store, but we're gonna make it homemade. We hope this video blesses you and let's get right to it. If you are new here, please hit that subscribe button. Come on in and be part of our frugal family. And for those of you who have been around for a while, you know we love you. So let's start by heading into the kitchen and we are gonna show you a simple crock pot meal for when the days start to get rushed around the holidays and you need something quick and easy but company worthy. So here it is. In my crock pot, I have about two tablespoons of butter that I just sliced thin and laid on the bottom. On top of that, I have two chicken breasts. Well, actually it was one big breast that Paul sliced in half and then pounded down that I am going to put right on top of the butter. Now this is thin. You can use thicker ones, however you wanna modify it. So we've got our butter, we put the chicken breasts on top. Now I'm going to take a little bit of an Italian herb grinder. And I'm just gonna put a little of this Italian herb on top. And then on top of that, I am going to put a cup of chicken broth. I want to put this over pasta. So I'm adding a little more broth than the recipe calls for. Then I'm gonna put in about a tablespoon of lemon juice or so, and one clove of minced garlic. And that's all it is to it. What I'm going to do is cover it and put it on low. I'm gonna check it in about three to four hours on low. When it's almost done, we're gonna add capers to it. And then we're gonna put it over some pasta. So hopefully this will be a really easy, delicious crock pot meal. This smells heavenly. I am going to put, Dixie can smell too, about a teaspoon, maybe a little bit more of capers in here. We're just gonna heat those through. I'm gonna boil up some linguine and then we're gonna add the linguine right to the pot to mix these flavors all together. So we let this cook on low for four hours. Our cutlets were extremely thin though. If your cutlets are thicker, you're going to have to cook it a little longer. And now I just boiled up some linguine on the stove and I drained it and now I'm going to mix it with all this delicious chicken. And as you can see, this chicken is literally just falling apart. I love these one pot meals. Well, actually this was two. I had to cook the pasta separately, but we're gonna dish this up, put a little grated Parmesan cheese, and we'll let you know how it is. This made a lot for us, so we're gonna have some nice leftovers. I'm just putting a little bit of extra broth on. 
I did make the extra broth, which I am so happy I did because we can use it now as a sauce over the pasta. First thing we have is a little flipped ear baby right here. Who knows we're eating. Is your ear flipped, Dixie? It is. All right, here we go. This looks delicious. I All have right. a piece of chicken. I have some pasta. I have a caper and a little grated cheese. Let's try this out. It's not good. Oh my goodness, yeah. Really? Wow. It's like being in an Italian restaurant. This yeah. is fantastic. This is really good. Definitely thumbs up on this, folks. You gotta try it. All right, this Paul is easy. Approved. Wow. <laughs> yeah, it was super easy. Wow, yep, really good. All right, now I'm excited. Thank really you. Good. As you can see, that was Paul approved. It was over the top with the flavor combination. And the broth I used was a homemade turkey stock I had made and kept in the freezer. I know I said chicken stock, which would be perfect, but it was actually a homemade turkey stock. Either way, it was phenomenal. It really was so good. So if you're pressed for time, this is a great, easy recipe that will be really family approved. Now I wanna just talk to you briefly about something that could be sapping your money throughout the holiday season, whether it's Thanksgiving, Hanukkah, Christmas, whatever it may be, and that is traditions. Now, traditions are something usually that have been passed on to us throughout the ages. Somebody had done it before us, or it could be something that we implemented, a tradition that we started maybe at a different stage of our life, now we need to revisit those traditions and see if they are still working for us or if maybe we can replace them with something else or possibly do without them. As we look back and review the traditions that we have implemented and that we are implementing, we need to look at them and see if they are still bringing us the same joy that they did several years ago, 10 years ago, whatever it may be, last year. Are they still bringing us that joy? Do we still have the finances to keep them up? Have they become a burden, something we really don't wanna do, but we think people around us are expecting us to do them? This is one area that we seriously can cut back on. I want you to stop and just think for a minute of things you do throughout the holiday season. Is there something there that maybe uh, makes you cringe a little bit when you think about it? It could be anything from cooking a special food to decorating to Christmas cards, whatever it may be, but is there some aspect that you think maybe this year you would like to fine tune just a little bit? Let me give you an example. I come from a traditional Italian family. Going back in the years, as an Italian, we kind of made Thanksgiving an Italian holiday. I mean, we kept the American aspect of the turkey and the stuffing and all that wonderful stuff, but we also added a first course of antipasto, which Paul and I still do to this day, a second course of pasta or macaroni with sauce, which we did away with, and then a third course of soup, of some kind of Italian wedding soup or some kind of soup. And as Paul and I came into our own traditions, we cut the pasta out, we cut the soup out, and we just kept the antipasto and the turkey meal. It simplified our life so much. It saved us money, it saved me a ton of work, and basically it was just way, way too much food. That's an example. Another area may be how much decorating you do. Maybe it's my age, I don't know. The over-the-top decorating is really not fun for us anymore. We put up a tree, we put up our crash, we put up lights, but as far as decorating in rooms that we're not in all the time, 
we don't do that anymore. We just decorate this area, really, right, Paul? Oh, absolutely. The uh, the living space gets decorated, but you know who's going to decorate the closet or that or the hallway? And we do put lights outside. We like to decorate outside, but that is another way we have scaled back a lot. And it doesn't only have to be financial scaling back. It could be just it's a hassle. It's not fun anymore, and that's okay. We have to allow ourselves that permission to take it a little bit easy this time of year. Another area is something like Christmas breakfast. Simplify Christmas breakfast. How about making a bread ahead of time? Just a simple bread and pair it with some fruit, and then you can maybe make a fun spread like honey butter or cinnamon butter, or maybe a fancy jar of jelly. Some hot chocolate or eggnog, just keep it simple. You're trying to get presents open and you're trying to prepare the evening or afternoon Christmas meal. This is one way to, to make it easier and you can utilize this on Thanksgiving as well. Do you need a big breakfast on Thanksgiving morning? Keep it simple. Another way we can simplify the holidays is stay out of the stores and stay out of the shopping channels on TV. You watch something like QVC, you walk into a big, beautiful department store, and what happens is our expectations become heightened. Well, our house doesn't look like that. I love watching QVC. I think it has some beautiful things, but I don't have a problem spending on QVC. I'll buy maybe two things a year, and I get decorating ideas from watching it, using thrift store finds or my own finds. But what these channels and what these stores do is entice you to buy more decorations, to decorate more of your home and clutter up things. That's something we can do without. Another one is the age old debate about Christmas cards. Postage has gone up significantly. Is that a tradition we wanna keep doing? I know Paul and I, we do send out Christmas cards. That's something I'm not ready to give up yet. I actually don't mind doing it. I find beautiful cards at the thrift store or on clearance at the end of the year, and that is something we enjoy doing. But I know a lot of people have cut that out. It's a lot of work. So rethink that too. Maybe this is the year you could say, you know what? I'm just not gonna do it this year, and that's okay. No one's gonna be angry with you. No one's going to say, oh my goodness, you didn't do such and such a year. Well, maybe they will, but then you just let them know, yeah, this is something we're cutting back on this year, and that's okay. I think the thing that will keep us focused when these traditions and things that we're not crazy about doing start to creep back in, Focus on the meaning of what we are celebrating. Keep in mind your beliefs, the root of your beliefs, and that's why you are celebrating your particular holiday. We are celebrating ours, it's the birth of our Savior, and that is the focus of our Christmas season. Thanksgiving is just a time to be thankful for all the blessings we have and for the sacrifices the people before us have made to live in this amazing country. So we really need to get back to the roots of why we are celebrating what we're celebrating. The joy and the beauty and that awe-inspiring feeling we get will be reason enough. So I hope that blessed you and encouraged you. It's okay to let some of these time old traditions go if they're just not working for us anymore. Now I'm gonna take you back into the kitchen and we are going to make a sweet treat that will take you all throughout the holiday season. Here it is. What we're going to make today is sweetened condensed milk. I wanna make some magic cookie bars and I don't have any sweetened condensed milk in the house, but I have milk and I have sugar, so let's see what we can do. I'm gonna start with two cups of milk, and it said you can use full fat or low fat. I am using full fat milk for this. And then to that, I'm adding two thirds cup of white sugar, and that's all there is to it. 
I have it on the back burner, which is my simmer burner, which is exactly where I want it to be. We have to keep this at a nice low temperature. What I'm doing is I'm just taking my rubber spatula and I am going around. The thing that is most important with this is that we dissolve all the sugar. The sugar has to be dissolved. If it's not, we're going to end up with a very, very grainy sweetened condensed milk and we don't want that. So we're going to just keep doing this until the sugar is dissolved. So this has been heating on the low burner and I just felt it. I take my finger, I did this, and I don't feel any granules of sugar. I'm going to take this out. We're not going to use this again. Now what I'm going to do is bring this to a simmer and a simmer is not a boil and I'm going to leave that be for about 35 minutes. You know so many convenience foods we think we have to buy we can just make at home with simple natural ingredients and that's kind of it's kind of exciting for me. Do not at this point stir it anymore. We're just going to let it simmer for about 35 to 40 minutes. You see this foam on the top? What you're going to do is skim some of that foam off into a bowl of water. And what they said that was is the impurities from the sugar and the milk. You don't want to scrape the sides as you're doing this though. You just want that foam off the top. So this has been cooking for about 40 minutes on simmer. You can see how it reduced. You see the line all the way around it. Don't scrape that down. Now we're going to let this cool. As it cools, it's going to get thicker. So we're going to set this aside and let it cool. Refrigerate the sweet milk promptly as soon as it cools. We are going to be making some magic cookie bars with the sweetened condensed milk we made. First thing I'm doing is using my butter wrapper to grease a 9 by 13 pan. Here are our yummy ingredients. We have one cup of semi-sweet chocolate chips. I am telling you this recipe, you can mix and match. Would you rather use milk chocolate chips? Would you rather use butterscotch chips? Vanilla chips, totally up to you. I've got a cup of coconut. I am not using sweetened coconut. I'm actually using unsweetened coconut, but by all means, you can use sweet coconut. A cup of that, and then about a half a cup of walnuts. You can use pecans if you prefer. We like walnuts, and honestly, they're a little bit cheaper. And I also decreased the amount that the original recipe called for, and I will link that down below. It called for two cups of chocolate chips. It called for a whole cup of nuts. I think that's just overdoing it, honestly. I scaled it down because it just seemed like an overload of add-ins that we don't necessarily need. And then what I'm going to do is crush graham crackers to make one and a half cups of graham cracker crumbs because a box of graham crackers is much, much cheaper than buying already crushed graham cracker crumbs. And then you can eat the rest for snack or whatever. So this is what we're starting with. And I also have one stick of butter that is melting on the stove. I crushed about nine graham crackers to get the cup and a half I need. Now I'm going to take our one stick of melted butter and I'm going to add it to the crushed graham crackers. And then I'll mix this all together. Now I'm going to take this crumb mixture and I'm going to put it into our greased 9 by 13 pan and we're going to press this down. Well, here is our cooled, sweetened, condensed milk. After it cooled yesterday on the stove, I just put it in a clean glass jar, covered it, and put it in the refrigerator. 
amazing. Yeah. Okay, let's put this on now. We're gonna pour it all over. And if you don't wanna make your own, which I'm sure a lot of you will be like, Emmy, really, just go buy a can. But you know what? I didn't have a can, and I bet this is gonna work wonderfully. They said this makes a can of the sweetened condensed milk like you would buy in the store. And now we're gonna take the same bowl we mixed the graham crackers in. Why should we have to clean another bowl? Going to add the nuts, the chips, and the coconut. And I'm just gonna give this a good toss. Yeah, I can't imagine adding more. The original recipe called for two cups of chips. Just seems like a lot. Okay, now what we're gonna do is just sprinkle this on top. And I'm sure a lot of you have made these through the years, but this is an old fashioned bar that a lot of people forget about sometimes. And I just like to put these out at Thanksgiving with my dessert. A little something different for those maybe who don't want pie. You certainly could make this around Christmas time as so well. I was using my hands to push it in and then Paul's like, use the bottom of the measuring cup. And I'm like, oh, what a great idea. That's why we work together, right Dave? That's right. Yeah, this works great. <laughs> this is like perfect, thank you. And we're just pushing this all down. Now I'm gonna put this in a 350 degree oven and I'm gonna let this cook for 25 minutes. I'm gonna check it after 20 just to make sure nothing's burning. So this baked 25 minutes at 350 degrees. And when it came out, while it was still warm, I took my spatula and I went around the edges just like this, all the way around so they weren't stuck to the edge. And you have to do that while it's still warm. Now it's completely cool. I'm going to cut it into little squares. Being that it's completely cool, I'm just going to cut it into little squares. After it's cut, I'm just gonna take the spatula and gently go under it. There we go. Now what is making me very happy, bottom is not crumbly at all, which means our homemade sweetened condensed milk worked beautifully. Because they're rich, I cut them into very small pieces. You want me to use these for Thanksgiving, so I'm gonna show you how I'm going to freeze them. Because this is a very sticky cookie, what I did was I took a cookie tray, put a piece of parchment paper down, and then after I cut the cookies into their little individual bite-sized pieces, I put them on the parchment paper, and now I'm going to freeze them like this. This way, they're not sticking together. If I was just to take them like this, pile them on top of one another, they're gonna stick together. So we're going to do it this way, and I think it should be perfect. Our little bars are all frozen. I'm super proud of these. I made these with homemade sweetened condensed milk, yay! Now what I'm going to do, this is a freezer safe container, and I am just going to lay them all along the bottom. This is what I was talking about. If we had not frozen these individually first, they would have been all stuck together. This works out perfect. Now I'm gonna take this piece of parchment, and I am going to put it right on top. I'm gonna to seal this, put it in my freezer. Now the next batch of cookies I make are gonna go right on top of here. We put the airtight seal on, and now it's gonna go right into our freezer, and we've got tons of room to add more. I hope this video was a blessing. We wanted to share all these things with you, and they all kind of tied in together for an effortless holiday season. So thank you for spending this time with us. Thank you for just being a part of our channel and blessing our lives. The question of the day is, tell me something that you're gonna be cutting back on this year for the holiday season. It could be Thanksgiving, Hanukkah, Christmas, um, New Year's, whatever it may be. Tell me a tradition that you're rethinking that maybe you could tweak a little bit 
to make your life a little bit easier? Leave that down in the comments below, please. If you haven't subscribed, hit that subscribe button. Leave us a big thumbs up. It helps us, please. And by all means, remember, we love you. Stay safe, stay well, and above all, we wish you blessings. Until our next video, bye-bye.